pleased to make your acquaintance, Mrs. Mason. Is Mr. Pratt available? No, he's not, to more the pity. Out entirely too often. Probably carousing with undesirables. Mr. Mason always said, and he knew. Our business is rather urgent, madam. When will he return? For all he confides in me, I might be the char. Has Pratt had any recent callers? I'm hardly his keeper, Mr. Holmes. But since you ask, no. And no surprise either. Moody as he is. Have you had any recent word of Pratt, Mrs. Mason? Not a syllable. No doubt he's idling somewhere in the devil's grasp. Abusing mind and body with strong drink and who knows what else. Anything worthy of our immediate attention, Doctor? This woman is passing strange. What is she doing here? She's nosy, I suspect, and lonely. But I'm sure she believes she's protecting her investment completely within her rights as a landlady. She has peculiar ideas of a cleaning costume. Proof that beauty is vain. Proverbial wisdom has it that one can be cured of every folly but vanity. We may have cause to test the truth of that pearl. Suggestions, Watson? Perhaps Professor Dewar deserves more of our attention. He at least is likely to receive us. You may be right, but Bermondsey is a very large area, and as I mentioned, Mycroft presumably did what could be done for him. It may be well to ask, given his own experience, how well he did it. Pratt seems like an interesting character, but we have no idea where he is at the moment, and I don't think we will for some time yet. May we examine the premises? I thought you had a look of prospective tenants. These rooms are entirely reasonable and well maintained. Rather like myself. Mr. Pratt is giving up the flat? He's in arrears. I'm thinking of eviction. Might we see the other room? That would be highly improper, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Pratt doesn't even like me in there. He may be irresponsible, but he has some claim to privacy. The room lacks traditional amenities, and the decor is rather eccentric, wouldn't you say? Indeed. And he was civil servant. Oh, but he was born in India, you see. Quite bohemian. Raised like a gypsy. I fail to grasp the connection between bad taste and gypsies. Never had a proper English family. No one to show him the right way. Artists' hours and habits. Careless in dress. Housekeeping not above reproach. If I didn't tidy occasionally, his room would be a sty. Ah, yes, I understand that type of remark all too well. Okay, there's nothing more that we can do here just yet. May I leave my card with you? I'm not his personal secretary, Mr. Holmes. Nor did I presume it. Perhaps you could send a note to 221B Baker Street when he returns. I suppose I might. I'll tell him you were here. I would be grateful for your trouble. Matron, we are going to the new ward. Fine, Mr. Holmes. Disregard hospital policy. Ignore my authority. Have your savage and lawless ways with us. If that's your idea of being accommodating, your manner could stand improvement. Well, we did kind of dick around with the uh, gurney and such. I don't think there's any love lost between these two, though. Oh. Now where has he gone?
Sister, what has become of the gentleman in white? The poor dear is singing in the choir invisible, Mr. Holmes. Popped off without a word he did. Singing in the choir invisible. I have never heard that expression before. I'm guessing that he's dead? Wait, I thought that we solved the puzzle. Hmm. Mycroft, what about Professor Dewar? Why did Cain kill his brother? Yes, I know he's Professor Abel's colleague. I meant, where is Dewar now? Is he in danger? No, sir. Yes, sir. Three bags full, sir. Where was the boy? The man who made it did not want it. The man who bought it did not use it. The man who used it did not know it. What's it? Uh, the ninth prime. <sighs> Enough of riddles, Mycroft. Speak plainly. Mm, so very difficult to find really decent fish and chips. Um, buffalo chips are used for fuel in the American West. West of Chelsea, all mothers. I apologize, brother. I was frustrated. I've got the pieces now. I'm at a loss, Mycroft. I found the fool's cap, but I can't penetrate the puzzle. Douse it. Toast it. Don't eat it. Sahara has none. It's better than cursing in the darkness. Wet and warm, is it? I should have known. True to your idol, Poe. He has a remarkable mind, Watson. I know where Dewey is. Well, if you tell me, we'll both know. In the child's rhyme, the boy lived in the lane. The answer to the riddle is certainly a coffin. And the ninth prime is 19. Dewey's at 19 Coffin Lane. That's over the river at Bermondsey. We can go if you're ready. Oh, we're ready. Even though there is a lot to examine in here, the main point of interest is this stove just here. recognize this document, Professor? It was in the stove. No. Deuced strange storage place, but it's safer than most. I never light a fire. Mycroft must have put it there. Put it back, won't you? In a moment. That won't do, Mr. Holmes. Put it back, please. It'll save me a lot of work. Is there any reason why this is going to be stored in here? Well, it's not our home, so... We know of his existence, and I'm sure we will be welcome back here. Professor Dewar, I am Sherlock Holmes. Mycroft is my brother. I perceive a resemblance. What do you want? 
Dr. Watson and I hope that you might help us with an inquiry. I've heard of you, sir. We can talk while I work. I'm in the middle of something rather delicate, so you might choose your spot carefully. Have you recently received any unwanted visitors? None but yourselves. I'm accustomed to working without interruption. Does your family know where you are? I'm a bachelor, Mr. Holmes. My whereabouts are my own affair. How do you come to be here? Your brother insisted, said the new formula had gone missing and that he wanted me out of the way until it was recovered. Most pleased to find this place decently equipped with research apparatus. Mycroft has been injured in an explosion, Professor. Nothing to do with my work, is it? His club blew up. The police claim it was an accident, but we believe a bomb was purposefully set, that Mycroft was the target, and that the act was related to the theft of your formula. Your hypothesis is based on sound data? It is. And had he been as concerned for his own safety as he was for yours, we might not be speaking. Can the cause of an explosion be easily determined from its consequences? Rarely. But with application and the proper research tools, one can often discover the cause from the type of fire, the nature of the physical damage, and the organic consequences. Dr. Watson discovered some fulminate of mercury, but we exhausted the supply in our experiments. If the explosion was initiated by a bomb, there is likely to be more evidence of the fact a, a timing or detonation device, chemical burns, or some such. Professor, what is the subject of your formula? While Abel and I were working with the ballastite, that's Nobel's latest, we refined an extraordinarily powerful explosive. It's more versatile and less volatile than nitroglycerine. The strategic implications were obvious, eh? So you registered the components in compliance with the Foreign Office's Byzantine requirements? I've made some further modifications that will affect bomb design and detonation velocity, but by and large the formula stands as written. Is that a copy of your formula, Professor? It appears to have your mark on it. If it does, it's mine. Could you replicate the formula from memory? Though with great difficulty, perhaps. The formula describes a complex and unique mixture of chemical compounds. Presumably, the acquisition and manufacture of such materials would exceed the means and expertise of all but a handful of state agencies. I take your point. No one could build a bomb in the basement with it. Mycroft wasn't felled by my work. Do you have a copy of the formula? Oh, Mycroft said something about keeping a copy, but I'm afraid I couldn't lay my hands on it at the moment. Where is Professor Abel? He's lecturing in America, preaching to the converted or laying pearls before swine, depending on your prejudices. His family's with him. No offence, Professor, but I've rarely whiffed such a rank odour. No offence taken. One man's perfume is another's off. The smells do have their uses. I believe the neighbours think I'm experimenting with new mixtures of fertiliser. Contrary to the old saw, ignorance is never bliss, but it may serve a purpose. Professor, could you analyse this spring? I have reason to believe that... Enough, Mr. Holmes, I see what it is. You suspect it has material importance to the detonation of your bomb. Don't bias the inquiry further. I must form my own conclusions. Excellent. Very sound practice. How can I reach you? Send a note to 221B Baker Street when you have the results. Do you recognize that penetrating mix of pungent odors, Watson? Mmm. Rotten eggs, manure, and household cleaner, I should think. Disgusting. Descriptively apt, but highly unscientific, Doctor. Ammonium sulfate and certain nitrates are nearer the mark. Perhaps, but my advice is take shallow breaths so or you'll pass out. Okay, I think that we're done here. And when I first played this, I had a lot of trouble actually escaping this room. 
From what you can see here, there's nothing to indicate where we go. Apart from right at the top here, for some strange reason. Oh. May I have a word with Mr. Silverbridge? We are prejudiced to your religious affiliation, Mr. Holmes. Might you have your Christian name? Holmes will suffice. If you say so, sir. Please wait here. You're still here? I thought you might have tired of the wait. Oh, you weren't that long. <coughs> Where was that cough? Where's that come from? What is the problem, Hepplethwaite? Won't he see us? As it happens, Mr. Silverbridge is indisposed and cannot be disturbed. You gave him my name? I did, and he does not know you. Mycroft Holmes, yes, but you, sir, he neither knows nor wishes to include in his acquaintance at present. May I show you to the door? I can be reached at 221B Baker Street. Please tell him that I am available at his earliest convenience. Silverbridge has read the newspapers, I presume. We have. His sympathies to you. The master anticipates a complete recovery for Chairman Holmes. That's most reassuring. Where is the child whose toys litter the room? Master Virgil's habits can be of no concern to you. If that's all, you may leave. Thank you very much. You find the woman in the painting beautiful, Watson. Very lovely. I'm smitten. Control yourself. Note the wedding ring. Mrs. Silverbridge, I shouldn't wonder. One may admire without wishing to possess. Your pardon, Doctor. It appears a child has been given the run of the house. Where is the lad? At school, I should think. Or perhaps Silverbridge himself is of a juvenile turn of mind. The Puerile MP? They certainly act like children sometimes, but I doubt that explanation will serve in this instance. Talk of the boy seems to have struck a nerve. His demeanor changed, but is the alteration significant? He might simply be one of those suffocatingly protective family retainers. Perhaps, but I think I saw more than duty in his eyes. The possession suggests an active lad. Would you not agree, Watson? My child's mind envies the bounty. Still, he seems a housebound boy, and that can't be all good.
Come in, Mrs. Hudson. It's from the yard, Watson. Listen. A body pulled from the Thames at the needle is not the usual type. Conventional identification impossible. Ticket stubs from the Whitehall line suggest a civil servant. As you aren't currently engaged, you might find it diverting. I would welcome your assistance. Respectfully, G. Lestrade. Very civil of him. He wants your help. Well, we won't throw it away. Keep it for a rainy day, but I have other fish to fry. How does Lestrade know that we're not busy? I mean, we do have some of the places we can go, but this is a welcome distraction. Silverbridge, Pratt and Lord Lawton are listed in Kelly's. We'll have to find the others by more inventive means. Did Mycroft hold specific suspicions of any one of the seven, do you suppose? Hard to say, but conspiracy implies multiple suspects. Recommendations, Watson? Nothing material, Holmes, I'm sorry. Despite your best efforts, I've understood little of what I've seen or heard. But you have an inclination, surely. You might assert more of your own presence in the investigation. Yours is the finest mind for detection in the world. I don't believe you have fully exploited the leads that you have taken such pains to develop. That a corpse has eclipsed the imagination of Scotland Yard is hardly remarkable. Have you deduced the cause of death? Was it murder, misadventure, or natural causes? Suicide, I shouldn't wonder. The body is obviously unrecognisable, perhaps from being submerged for a time. Might we solve the mystery for him? Lestrade evidently thinks so. On the other hand, he may simply be trying to occupy me. His idea of kindness. A kind thought must count for something. You have a more generous disposition than I, Watson. What does your intuition tell you about our next move? Nothing. But cold reason suggests we should investigate Lestrade's nameless corpse. What makes you say so? Prudence. Lestrade is holding out an olive branch. Take it. He wants no animosity between you. Besides, he could compromise the confidentiality of our inquiries were he to get wind of them. He will be less interested in what you are doing if he thinks you are occupied on his behalf. Your reasoning is sound, Watson, but I don't think I'm available to its inducements. Okay, let's go and have a look at this corpse. Let's be off, Watson, while the scent is fresh. I'm no tracking hound, Holmes, but I know how to hunt. Oggy, heard anything that might interest me? Nothing, Mr. Holmes. You know I'd try to flog it if I did. What do you know about the corpse just pulled from the Thames? Oh, about uh, half a crown's worth. At that depressed price, I'll assume against all odds that your information is worth even less than usual. Well, here's a free sample. The Yard thinks it's a strong arm robbery gone wrong. Victim's watch and wallet are missing. The inquest is scheduled Thursday next. As I suspected, such information is nearly worthless. Which is more bother? Lestrade being in or being out? It's a fair question. 
Seems I'm the only one round here working all hours. Go in if you like. Sergeant, might I speak to Lestrade, please? Of course. Inspector, Mr. Holmes to see you. Mr. Holmes, Doctor. Inspector? I need details of the corpse you hauled from the Thames, Lestrade. Middle-aged, from the thin side of average, shot in the head, cavernous hole, dead before it hit the water. The crime was witnessed? No. A riverman may have heard the shot. He found the body by the needle. He'll collect half a crown for the corpse. Claims to know nothing about how it got there. You believe him? These river chaps are a dodgy lot. You'll volunteer anything that turns a profit and nothing that won't. But I don't think he did the murder. Where can I find this worthy? The body's at Bart's, not a pretty sight. His face is gone, can't even tell what colour his eyes were. The rest of them's all right. Hadn't been in the water long. I was referring to the riverman. Ah! Needham's his name. Constable on the scene took all the particulars. He's at the Needle. You remember P.C. Roach? I've been trying to forget him for years. Still adrift in a sea of paperwork, Lestrade. I'm drowning, Mr. Holmes. Going down for the third time. Any more information about the corpse from the embankment? Nothing you don't know about. It looks like a random robbery and murder. Much obliged to you for looking into it. You understand we need to be more circumspect than usual, Watson. You've always kept your own counsel while sharing an investigation. True, but I've generally told Lestrade what I thought he needed to know about a given inquiry. Presently, I'm not certain what that might be. It's obvious Mycroft did not want official involvement in this matter. Then keep a close watch on your emotions, and I'll keep my tongue between my teeth. Is there anything here to detain us further, Watson? I don't think so, Holmes. But you often extract valuable nuggets from what I have deemed a tapped-out vein. 